In life, we all encounter obstacles, and those obstacles come in all different shapes, sizes, and forms. The question is, how do we handle those obstacles? Do we attack them head on, or do we allow them to make us quit? Welcome to the No Quit Living Podcast, where we aim to motivate and inspire listeners to never give up on themselves, their dreams, or their goals. We will interview successful people from all walks of life as they share their no quit stories when they had the choice to give up or give in, but they didn't. We thank you for listening, and we hope to be that jolt of positivity as you go for your greatness. Welcome to episode number 144 of the No Quit Living Podcast. I'm your host, Christopher J. Worth, and today's theme of the day is relentless. Our quote of the day comes to us from Robin Sharma. It's not the most talented who wins, it's the most relentless who does. Today's episode is sponsored by the good people over at West Fair Communications, who publish the Westchester County Business Journal and the Fairfield County Business Journal. These newspapers do a wonderful job in covering all aspects of the business world within two of the most influential markets in the New York metropolitan area. You can also take advantage of their daily news feeds, which keep track on the companies and thought leaders in these important regions. For more information, take a look at www.westfaironline.com. Trust me, once you start reading, you won't quit. It is an honor to bring you today's episode. Our guest has quite a no-quit story after a time when he had just gotten back from an Air Force deployment. I don't think anyone would have questioned or even batted an eye if Logan Farr didn't attack life the way he currently does. His positive attitude and mindset is hard to miss. I hope you enjoy today's episode. Logan, I'd like to welcome you to the No Quit Living podcast. Hey, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. So the first question we ask everybody is, are you ready to make it happen today? Oh, completely. I'm always ready. I knew that'd be your answer. So <laughs> the uh, number one objective of our show is to motivate and inspire listeners to never give up. And I was curious if you had either a no-quit story of your own or perhaps a challenging time that really tested you and you could have given up or given in, but you didn't and you kept on going. Oh, definitely. Uh, so in 2014, uh, I just got back from an, an Air Force deployment. So if anyone knows what that means, it means cushy. There was a pool and it was a non-war uh, zone. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, I got back and the next day I went out for my 21st birthday with uh, all my sergeants. And being a dumb kid, uh, out behind the bar we were at, there's a platform that overlooks the train tracks. Long story short is I went outside to go get some air. I uh, tripped on the stairs, hit my head in the railing and fell across the train tracks. Uh, the train came by. Uh, hit my left leg, pulled my right into it, dragged me about 100 yards down the track. Uh, I remember none of this. I woke up in the hospital the next day, and they had to explain to me the story of uh, what happened. It was one of those things where I'd I'd spent the last three years training uh, for some military stuff to try and qualify and prove myself to to myself that I was uh, good enough to do these things. And in the blink of an eye, it was over. It was one of those things where it was just gone. It was taken out. I could no longer do it. Uh, cause uh, at that point uh, I'd lost both my feet, uh, from that accident. And, uh, as I'm doing that, I'm actually watching TV. And I just remember, I think it was like a rerun of the CrossFit games or something. And I was like, you know what? That looks really hard. I'm like, I'm just going to train now. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just become physical and figure out where I can go from there. Uh, so three days after my, I had a bunch of surgeries, uh, three days after I was like just sitting there kind of recovering in my bed. Uh, in between surgeries, I requested one of those bars uh, that you use to sit up uh, in your hospital bed. And I requested one of those across my bed so I could start doing pull-ups again, uh, like flutter kicks, just anything I could to stay active in my bed. Uh, I got out of the hospital a month later, went right into a gym in my wheelchair, uh, started training immediately. Um, I want to say probably a month after that was the CrossFit uh, Open. Uh, I did this thing called the Wheel Wad Open. They're an organization uh, that helps adaptive athletes compete in the CrossFit Open by adapting the workouts. Uh, I did that, took six in the world against uh, monsters like Zach Roll and uh, Kevin Ogar. Uh, and it was the rest was history. I got my legs uh, about eight months after that, competed in a strongman competition. Uh, the next month, took second overall in the uh, lightweight division or light heavyweight division. I haven't stopped, man. I mean, it's just been one thing after another, keeping uh, keeping active and just finding new goal one after another. You meet one goal, you have to set another one, otherwise you get stagnant. Well, that is quite quite a story, and I commend you for, for just being so open and honest about it. And I think your candor is, 
is pretty amazing. So I have to ask you, during during that time in the hospital, what was it that kept you going? And, and I, I'm curious, you requested that bar so you could be so you could do pull-ups and flutter kicks and those type of things. What is it at that time when I know a lot of people probably would have been faced with the woe is me and some of those feelings? What is it that kept you going and how did you stay so positive? Because your, your attitude definitely, you can hear it as you speak. Well, yeah, well, one, of, one of the big ones was my wife. I mean, my wife and my family, my, she was my girlfriend at the time. Uh, she was there driving me on the whole time, uh, being really being a rock. Uh, it's one of those things that uh, I knew if I let myself break, I would have broken. Like I knew if I really went into it, it would not have ended well for me. Uh, I'm that type of person to where I need to commit. If I let myself wallow, I will wallow. Uh, so I knew uh, I had to attack the next thing I was going after. Otherwise, I would not have ended well for me. Uh, I, I don't know what would have happened. I just know it would not have been good. I know I need to attack uh, the next thing along the line to keep myself going. I needed another challenge. Uh, my wife saw that. She pushed me for it. My mom, my uh, dad, all of them, they were just very, very supportive because uh, they knew that I needed something. They, I mean, they helped. My wife was right there next to me. I mean, no, no sympathy. Uh, I was uh, home. Whenever the first week home, I was complaining that uh, she told me to vacuum, and I was like, babe, I'm in a wheelchair. It's so hard for me to do. She's like, Logan, you just worked out for three hours. You can vacuum. You know, it's interesting. I, I think I think the the vacuum excuse when, when you just spent three hours working out, I, unfortunately, I, she definitely saw right through that. Yeah, <laughs> but I need someone like that because uh, I'm that person where if I don't want to do it, I make an excuse for it. So I need someone like that. It's like, nope, you're doing it. No, it's, uh, it's always important that the people that are what we call on our on our show is the people that are in your corner and on your bus. And obviously between your girlfriend, then now your wife and your parents, you clearly had some had some por- some supportive people. So I wanted to ask if you wouldn't mind just telling our listeners a little bit about what you do on a day by day basis today. Oh, I got you. So uh, actually, I'm out in Jersey. I help run the CrossFit program for this gym called Blue, uh, Blue Titan Fitness and Self-Defense in uh, Rockaway, New Jersey. Uh, I do all the CrossFit programming. Uh, I coach all the morning classes from 5 a.m. till 11 uh, a.m. And then I do strength and CrossFit training for myself from 8 to 9 a.m. In between my one set of classes, I have that little break there. And then from uh, 11 to 1, I do jiu-jitsu every day uh, with my instructor one, uh, who helps uh, coach at Blue Titan. He's a black belt out uh, Blue Titan uh, under Jamie Cruz, uh, Joseph Campisi, and just – Honestly, just keep grinding. I was doing CrossFit for a long time, and I found jujitsu, and it uh, reignited my uh, hunger. No, I think it's I think it's amazing how, how much that you uh, you do and how you got back into it and just kept going at it. So I, I appreciate that. So wanted to ask you, how do you define success, or what does success mean to you? Success, um, honestly, it's doing something you're happy with until you're the best at it. it and you're, the best could be a relative. But I mean, as long as you are happy doing what you're doing, I think that's successful. You have a lot of people who are, I mean, making millions, but they're unhappy people. They're unhappy in their situation. They're so caught up in the money. But you have these people making $7 an hour coaching CrossFit or working at some gym and they love it. They have a true passion for it, whether, I mean, whether it be fitness or not. I think as long as you're happy doing what you're doing, you're successful. No, I think that it's so important, whatever it is you are doing. And, and like you said, you touched on something that I think so many people know is we all know people that are very successful financially as far as they have a good job and big houses and, and all those material things, but they're not really deep down the side. They're not happy not doing what they like. And I can just think of quite a few people that I know that used to be in, uh, in my personal life that fall into that category. And happiness is not about how much money you have in the bank. It's not about how much you know things you have materialistically. It's about you inside and I think what you do and how you go about each and every day. So I'm glad you touched on that. So one of the things that we look to do on every show is add value. And one of the things we've been talking about for the past many months now is what people do when they wake up or what they do on a daily basis. So I was curious if you have either a daily or a morning ritual that you swear by. Honestly, not really. I mean, I give it 4 a.m. to uh, go coach. So I mean, I'm basically dragging myself out of bed. Uh, I guess I, I, the, about the only thing I do every day is a big old half glass of apple cider vinegar, and that I mean, that gets all dregs of sleep off you real quick. You're you're wide awake and uh, hitting on all cylinders. You know, I gotta ask. I, that's been recommended to me so many times, but it, just the smell of it. How, be honest to our listeners. How how bad is it? 
It is disgusting. I gag. I mean, I've been doing it for six months now, and I gag and almost throw up every single morning. <laughs> so, so it, it's it, so bad. Are the benefits that good that they they oh they overcome you almost gagging and throwing up every single time? One hundred percent. I notice when I don't do it, my morning just hasn't started right. I mean, it's one of those things where it's I've done. I've been doing it for so long that my body just expects it. It's like get it over with. But I truly feel good after it. I mean, you just feel like. If you ate anything bad the next day, it basically feels like it's getting burned out of you <laughs> from this stuff. You know, I, I try to personally take, and I and I get a lot from each episode, and I think hopefully our listeners do as well. But I think just listening to you describe it, I might have to take your word for it and just maybe live vicariously through you on this one. Oh, yeah. Okay, don't listen to the people who say, like, put honey and stuff in it because it makes it taste a little bit better. But all it does is coat your mouth, and now you're stuck with that taste for, like, 30 <laughs> minutes. I'm like, I'd rather just do it in a shot and get it over with. Now, uh, how much of it do you drink? Uh, I do about a half glass. I do a lot more than most people. Just, I don't know. I saw Crone Gracie do it one time. I'm like, well, if he does it, look at him. All right, so here's a question. I'm not sure what your what your um, nutrition background is, but what if I just down like a gallon of it at once? Would that be good for like a month? I think you might die. <laughs> that would burn a hole for you. Right, I'm good. I'm going to take your word for it. So, <laughs> so we're going to switch lanes here. Interesting question for you. If you could have dinner with anybody, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Ooh, dinner with anyone. That's a hard one. Honestly, Chris Pratt, because he seems like a like I don't I don't understand how someone can be as big as he is, but still be as normal as he seems. Like I, I would want to know his mental process for I mean still being a respectable guy in an industry that eats people like that alive. I would truly want to see his thought process. I think that would be my number one right now. No, it's definitely, he, he's definitely got a lot going on. And I think it's interesting how you described it as it seems as normal as he is, especially with, with the field he's in. And I think a lot of people, unfortunately, just get distracted with things. So I think that would be a pretty interesting, interesting dinner. So one of the things that we talk about on almost every episode are different books and things. And I was curious if you've read anything recently or perhaps during your recovery, anything that you read that you'd like to share with our listeners. Oh, I'm an avid reader. I go through about a book a day. Uh, but I'm, I go all over. I go from fantasy, sci-fi, fantasy, uh, to history. Uh, currently, I'm on uh, Graham Hancock's Underworld. It's uh, about ancient civilizations that we may have lost to us losing coastlines that we haven't discovered yet. It's a fascinating book on ancient civilizations. Uh, the guy is very insightful. He quotes a lot of knowledgeable people. Uh, it goes against what what a lot of people are being taught, but there's a lot of evidence to back up his stuff, and it's just a mind-blowing read. So that I've, I've not heard that book. So I want to just go back on one thing you just mentioned. Did you say you go through basically a book a day? Yeah, I go through. I have a Kindle Unlimited. I have two Kindles. Uh, my, I mean, basically I work out all morning and then I go home and, uh, me and my wife swap shifts. So she watches the baby in the morning. I watch him in the afternoon. What we like to do is to go out into this courtyard. He plays in the grass and I read my books and sit in the chair and, uh, play, go back and forth between reading and playing with him. And it's an ideal life, man. I love, I love reading. Uh, I got away from it for a while and I just got back into it. Uh, not recently, I guess like a few months ago. Uh, and I missed it. I truly, I mean, I have that thirst for knowledge, and it helps quench it. Helps keep me uh, sane, basically. No, I think that's that's it's so important for different things in life, and I think it's amazing that you tie it into into your daily, in essence, your ritual. And I think that's one of the things that we talk about is people will make time for things. You'll make time for your priorities, or you'll make time for excuses. And you know, you can't have both excuses and results. So it's interesting how sometimes people make excuses for what they can't do but the reality is it's just something that they're not willing to do right now and I think that's the important part is you mentioned is you got away from it but you got back to it now and that's the important part is and that's just what happens in life is we have all different obstacles and challenges that come about and the question is do you make time for for those things that are important to you and obviously you're back now and if you're doing a book a day I don't I don't care if you have four or five six Kindles you're still putting the time so uh, I think it's pretty commendable that you take time and you stick to it. Oh, but it's, it's one of the things where it's uh, it's a truly entertainment for me. I mean, uh, I'm that person where if I'm not sitting, I mean, I mean, I have ADHD to the max. I need to be going 100 miles an hour, and so if I choose to get stagnant, I play video games, and I don't like that. Like, uh, I love, I mean, I love video games, 
But if I let those take over, I'll play those for all play up all day. I'll skip working out. I'll skip reading. Uh, but that's where I realized with uh, not having reading in my life, I would, video games are taking over. So I realized, like, nope, I have to get back to reading. And that now eats up more of my time than any of those other things, which is nice. No, that's pr- you probably get a lot more out of reading than you do video games. Oh, yeah. And the wife doesn't yell at me as much. <laughs> so one of, <laughs> one of the things that we're that we're fascinated with is the word accountability. And we talk about it on, on every episode and we talk about it on the stage and in our, our programs and, and other stuff we do at No Quit Living. So I wanted to ask you, what does accountability mean to you? Um, for me, uh, I use accountability in terms of my friends and like uh, just keeping track of how we're doing. In ter- like if I'm getting fat, they're going to tell me, Logan, you've been eat- you're, doing- you're doing something wrong. You're getting fat. Uh, you're getting slow, things like that. You need you need people in your life uh, to really make sure your goals are aligned. Make sure you're not slacking. Uh, I think for me, I think the accountability is. I'm gonna bring it down to friends or people around you holding you to a higher standard than you hold yourself. That's that's important. I think that's something that almost verbatim gets gets mentioned in some way is is people or yourself just holding you to to a higher level of accountability or to a higher level of standard and i think that's that's the important part of that so i wanted to ask you if you could go back to five years ago what would be one thing you wish you knew then uh one thing uh see for me that the people have been asking you that question a lot honestly nothing because i wouldn't want to change anything that has happened uh, I'm a big believer in everything happens for a reason. There's no coincidences. You you made a series of choices to get you to where you are. They may have been minuscule. They may have been big. But they were your choice. You chose to go left when you could have gone right. And it led you to this moment. So I personally wouldn't want to know anything because I would not want to change how anything turned out, good or bad. Because it's who I am now. It's made me a better person than I was back then. Uh, I think that's the biggest thing I can take away from it is I just, I've become so much better not knowing what's coming. No, I think that's it's so important that that you you mentioned that because I think that's what a lot of us I guess miss the boat on in some ways is is we all in some ways want to go back and say I wish I knew this then and I wish I knew that. But what you said was was so spot on is if that was the case you wouldn't be where you are today because it's during those challenges and those times whether they're good bad or just average times, it's you build and you grow during them. And, I, and I'm glad you, you touch on that because if you had changed anything, you probably wouldn't be here and we wouldn't be here speaking. So I'm glad that you, you took that approach because it is really interesting how people look at things. Oh, completely. That's, but uh, one of my favorite things is when that rabbi talks about the lobster. Uh, too many people these days avoid pain. And if they look back, they probably try and avoid a painful situation. Well, the rabbi points out the only reason a lobster grows is because it becomes uncomfortable in its shell. Then it sheds that shell and grows a new one. When that one becomes uncomfortable, from it being too big inside, it, it has to shed it and grow again. Uh, people are, they seek the easy way out too much. They think the, they seek the less painful route, when oftentimes the painful route is where you, you gain the most. You learn the most about yourself. And that's, I think that's sorely lacking these days in most people. No, I, I couldn't agree more. Is it's during those tough times and those challenging times where you actually grow. There's not a lot of people that are unbelievably successful. When someone asks them, you know, how they get there, they say, you know, it was during those those great times and everything was going great that I kept on growing and building. It's it's usually the opposite where they say, the reason I'm successful, individually or as a team or as a business, is because of those tough times and because of those hard times. And every single time where I got knocked down, I got back up. Completely, completely agree. I also think perspective helps. Uh, And I think that's one of my biggest uh, strengths is I try and get as many perspectives as I can on life. And that's why a big thing my wife does is she helps uh, troubled youth. And just hearing some of the stories that come out of these kids, it makes me, I never want to complain about anything. Uh, Just the terrible things that go in this world. And we think, oh, dang it, I ran out of coffee this morning. And that's an excuse not to do something later on in the day. It just really gives you a, a lane to see, like, okay, things can be so much worse for you. Uh, you just have to look at it and be like, okay, nope, still going to do it, still going to truck through. I don't want to do it, but I'm going to. No, I think perspective is something that is something that we all probably miss. And, and like you said, running out of coffee is, is really not one of those important things, nor is it one of those things that you should really fret about during the day. 
Oh yeah, but how many times have you heard the stories that there someone's at Starbucks and they see that person lose their mind because there's no soy milk or something? <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't picture you being being one of those uh, who's going to flip out over some soy milk being gone. Oh, no, I take that coffee black. Delicious. <laughs> Can't change that flavor. Well, you know what? When it comes to flavors, you and your morning ritual. I'm again. I'm. I'm going <laughs> yeah, to live. Vi- I'm living vicariously <laughs> through you. So I wanted to ask you if you could only define yourself in one word. What would that word be? Relentless. That's a, that's a great word. So any exciting things coming out, or I know you're training and doing jujitsu and those things. Any, you know, you had said you'd finished six and then and then second in some different competitions. Anything else coming out in the near future where you're competing? Um, in? I have a competition in LA in September. I'm doing. Um, that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, but right now, uh, then I have uh, ADCC trials in November. I'm going to try out for. Uh, Abu Dhabi Championships, I think it's called. It's uh, basically the best of the best in the world. Try and qualify to go to Abu Dhabi to compete against the best of the best in jiu-jitsu. Like, if you're an ADCC champion, like, you're no joke. Like, you're, you're a monster. Maybe, um, so I'm only in Connecticut, so maybe you uh, you and I should spar a little bit. I'm, uh, you know, pretty hey, good. I'm down. No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> def- I'm not down. I was just kidding. <laughs> so I wanted to... What did you say? No, I was saying it's one of those things where uh, jujitsu. It's one of those, like I'm a I'm a confident guy, and I need my head smashing every now and again. I need my ego beat down, and that's jujitsu. That's why I need that every day. Can't let that ego get out of control. All right, I'll fight you under only under one condition. What's that? If both your arms are tied behind your back. Hey, that works. I'm pretty <laughs> good with using my legs. <laughs> um, so I wanted to ask before we let you go, if you have any parting words you'd like to leave with our listeners. Uh, honestly, it's I'm gonna go back to that relentless. I mean, any pursuit you're doing, you have to be relentless with. I mean, if you want to be good at anything, people have to look at you and they're gonna think you're crazy. I mean, no one who's great at anything is viewed as a sane person because it's an uncommon characteristic to be able to sacrifice certain areas of your life to pursue something you truly want to do. And I think, and once again, I'm gonna come, uh, come back to the pain is. You need to suffer to truly, truly see what you really are at your core. Uh, and if you never see that, I mean, what's the point of even doing any of this? No, I think that's great advice. And I think you, you did hit it on the head in that sense is that so many people that are successful in life in certain areas, you know, they've put in the blood, sweat, and tears. And a lot of times people, I don't know if they, if they forget, but sometimes maybe they they forget about the time that people put into it to become the best or one of the best. And I think that's important that you touch on that. So I wanted to ask you, Logan, for our listeners that would like to follow you or connect with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, Instagram is is the only platform I'm consistent on. I'm a uh, Mr. Period Footloose on Instagram. And that's, uh, that's basically the only platform I'm really consistent on. That's awesome. So listen, Logan, I truly, truly appreciate your time. It's, it's am- amazing that you're going through what you went through with such a positive attitude and you're making a difference. And I really appreciate you spending some of your time with us and hopefully we can stay in touch. Oh, thank you very much, brother. Thank you you for having me on. Let me spread the message. Uh, Like I said, you guys ever need anything, let me know. And if anyone has any questions, just feel free to shoot me a message. I'm pretty good about responding. And if anyone needs any help, anything like that, once again, shoot me a message. I'm always there. Thank you for listening to episode number 144. When Logan lost both of his feet in a tragic train accident, nobody would have blamed him if his attitude took a turn. Instead, while still in hospital, he asked for a bar so he could begin working on his pull-ups and his flutter kicks. Today, Logan is up every single morning at 4 a.m. heading over to train others at the CrossFit gym, grab a quick workout himself, train some more clients, and then grab a jiu-jitsu training class of his own. If you didn't know his backstory and I told you the last part first and then shared how he didn't have both of his feet, you probably wouldn't believe me. His definition of success was dead on. He said it's doing something you are happy with until you are the best at it. And being the best or your best is all relative. Logan shared how too many people avoid pain, but he believes that pain is where we grow and you learn from those tough times. Logan believes that too many people seek the easy way out in life. In his closing remarks, Logan shared how you need to sacrifice certain areas of your life and go through the pain. So my question to you, the no Crit tribe, is just that. What do you do when you experience pain? Do you make excuses? Give up? Complain about how hard it might be? Or do you get after it and give it everything you have? In life, we all encounter obstacles and challenges. But it's during those tough times and those challenging times 
when we are truly tested. So the next time you face adversity, and you will, and you get hit head on with an obstacle, don't give up. Don't give in. Go around, go through, go over or go under, but don't give up. Challenge yourself and go for your greatness. And lastly, to our listeners, thank you. We truly appreciate your time, and we hope our episodes inspire you to keep on attacking life and never giving up. To quote Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, it's always too early to quit.